I'm like really trying to refrain from saying like greetings all you cool cats and kittens welcome to my channel but I am gonna wait for some people to get on here for dinner with Tori okay one joiner I don't know if anyone's actually making the dinner if you are you know comment a little hello you're here to make dinner with me we're making the roasted chicken and veggies a whole roasted chicken which some people tend to think is scary so that's also why i chose to do it and it's just like a healthy a healthy dinner i think cooking a whole chicken is kind of like rewarding too lots of flavor hopefully I'll still just sit here and talk to myself. I'm gonna wait, it is 4.03. Give it about 10 minutes. Should we name the chicken? So I like, can't. But if you have any questions or wanna talk to me right now, now's the time. If you have any ingredient questions, anything like that. I hope you can't hear the wind. Just stare at my face and my pimple. I think I'm gonna name him Brad. This is my pimple Brad. He'll be joining us today too. I did have some people like RSVP that they were gonna be making dinner, so I'm just kind of waiting for them to get on. So again, if you're watching, please ask questions. Um, yeah, I don't want to start anything yet. I guess I can unwrap my chicken. If you haven't unwrapped your whole chicken, please do that now. Or you're going to tune in to me unwrapping my whole chicken. Okay, this is my quarantine look, sorry. I'm not cold, it's just I had a bad hair day. I ripped off all my super glue nails, so really roughing it. Okay. Here's my chicken. Um, on the ingredient list, I did say like a three-ish pound chicken. I found a four and a half pound chicken. That was the smallest chicken I could find. Oh well, he's gonna have to work. I'm gonna start unwrapping this though because we're gonna have to wash him or her, clean him or her out. What should we name him? Wait, what should we name the chicken so I like can give it some sort of pronoun? I don't know. I already forgot. Nope, my pimple's name is Brad, so we can't name the chicken Brad. And again, if you have any questions, funny stories, anything, please feel free to share right now. Okay, so basically I'm hoping that all of you already have all the ingredients that I had listed in my story like out and ready. Mise en place. Mise en place. I don't know. That's a French French term for basically having your shit prepped. Um, out and ready. But like I said, I'm starting with this chicken. I'm gonna wash this chicken. Pat it all dry. It looks gross. I'm also, which is so, I know it's kind of bad. I was like, I'm weirded out by like raw meats they really weird me out and like bones weird me out which is kind of sad because i'm a chef but it does it just weirds me out and i also think that that's why like people don't are kind of turned off by like whole chickens and stuff like it's just kind of oh like mm. but here we go i'm gonna try my best to like position my camera and whatnot so you can watch me clean him out. I still don't know what to name this chicken. Someone please help me name him. My pimple's name is Brad, so Brad's gone. Okay. 
bring you with me. So you can see me wash this chicken. That's a great point of view. Ew, okay. So basically I'm gonna get a strainer. <laughs> the chicken and just some cold water for some reason this water's hot if y'all don't give me a name for this chicken I'm gonna have to come up with one it's not gonna be good so basically there's grossness in here which some people like like the liver and whatnot you're just gonna want to pull that out or the neck this one doesn't oh it does have a neck I'll cook it with the neck though Basically, you're just gonna massage it in your cold water. Get in, get in the cavity. <laughs> um, just rinse it all out. Get all of its gross juices off. It's cute, right? Okay. And then a whole bunch of paper towels, or if you have like a cheesecloth towel. This is how you're gonna dry him off. Just make sure he's all dry. And they do, if you're doing the whole chicken, it has um, like a layer of skin on top. Sometimes water gets trapped in there. Just try to squeeze it all out. You're gonna have to go inside the chicken. I apologize. If you're a first time whole, co co whole cooked chicken, maker today let me know also if i'm going too fast let me know i plan for this to take like maybe a half hour 40 minutes sorry I'm, this is pretty gross but you gotta do it okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna call him good um i'm just gonna put him back in the strainer and let him kind of like i'm gonna sit him up like he's chilling in my sink just to let any excess water run out. Throw away all my grossness. I'll be right back in two seconds. I still don't have a chicken name, guys. Come on, name this chicken. I'm gonna wash my hands away from him because we just touched gross chicken. If you are using like chicken breast, go ahead, rinse that off too. You always want to rinse your poultry. Okay. Okay. Now, basically, we're going to chop all of our vegetables and like, oh, I need to stop saying and like, someone count how many times I say that too. So we're going to get your pot. It's obviously got to be big enough to fit a whole chicken and your vegetables. Probably like, okay, this one's like literally in front of great grandmother, so it doesn't tell you how big it is, but I'm going to assume it can fit a baby chicken and some veggies in it. But you're going to take some olive oil, your olive oil. We're not going to measure and you're just gonna season this pan with the olive oil. And now we're gonna move on. Let's do carrots first. If you got like baby carrots, normal carrots, that's fine. I'm probably gonna use, should I, no, I'm gonna use six, six carrots. I am going to quarter them. Let me try to see if I can. Oh yeah, look at those carrots. Okay, so I'm gonna chop the ends off. I also really, really wish I was just lazy and didn't go to the store that had the carrots that I like. But if you're ever in the store and you see like the purple and the yellow weird looking carrots, those are the best carrots ever, I swear. So quartering them, that's your sizes. It doesn't really have to be perfect. This is kind of like a hearty throw in a pot soup, or soup, oh my God, it's uh, roast. 
Okay, carrots. Boom. Done. In the pot. Going on to the potatoes. I got like this mixed bag of yellow, baby yellow, baby red. Doesn't matter. In my recipe, I called for a pound. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to have them. A pound is probably like half of this bag that I have here, but I like potatoes, so I might, of course, use them all. So you're just having them. Please feel free to chat. I know that you're like doing something too, so it is kind of hard for you to like comment. But if you're um an observer, please, please um feel free to chat. I'm really just eyeballing potatoes right now. Like if you really like potatoes like I do, as long as you're like only filling the bottom part of your pan and not like stacking them, like this is what my pan looks like right now. I'm not stacking them. I don't want it to take up like just too much room. Because we have to fit a chick on. Okay. I have like four potatoes left, so whatever. Okay. Hopefully your potatoes are chopped. Now we're going to do the red onion. Oh, the whole thing. But we are going to set some aside. For this miraculous butter we're going to be massaging into our chicken also if you don't know how to cut an onion this is how you cut an onion so I cut the, the top off I'm ripping off these little hairs oh, skin's already coming off and this is when you're gonna peel your skin off stuck to my finger Clark Griswold Christmas vacation here I would just peel like the first real layer off anyways because like sometimes those are like gross anyways as well okay. get all the crusties off your cutting board Again, if I'm going too fast, please say something. Although I feel like I'm not because I'm talking way too much, but I don't know. Okay, cutting an onion. We already have it. You're gonna go in half again. Don't go all the way through. And then we're just gonna do little squares. I don't know if you can see this. This is how we're dicing our onion. And we're gonna do this whole thing though. That's okay if it falls apart, whatever. Once you get to like the end part where you're kinda like scared, you're gonna chop your finger off. And just flip it over. It's not going to look pretty, clearly. Okay, one half done. Putting it all in my pot. Are you crying? I'm not crying. That was a lie. I'm kind of crying. Okay, screw these. Okay, same thing with this one. I'm really actually crying now. Good thing you can't see my face. I need to get my knife sharpened. Okay, um, I'm probably just gonna save like a handful for the butter. So save a handful, set a handful aside. And then put the rest 
in the pot. Oh my god, this onion is so strong. One of my chefs used to say, if like you're crying while cutting an onion, then you're doing it too slow. And I really haven't like mastered that yet, apparently. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. This is what my pan looks like. It's a nice even layer. We're gonna go back in with some more olive oil, drizzle it over the top. You want, you just want everything to kind of be covered. Not like covered, covered, but I literally don't like just have a nice glaze. And this is where we're gonna add some seasoning. So I have. I need a cameraman. I have pink Himalayan salt. If you have normal salt, that's fine. Basically, if you have normal salt, you're just gonna do this like wrist motion, maybe like three times. Isn't that a nice measurement? Oh well, I'm gonna crack some salt on top of this. Just a nice sprinkling of salty snow. And then you got your pepper. I love, of course, ground black pepper, but normal pepper's fine. If you have a peppercorn shaker, cool, basically the same thing. Again, you're probably just gonna do one or two little wrist, flick of the wrist dustings on your, on your pan. If you're using like actual whole peppercorns, they're just like more flavorful. That's why I enjoy them. That's what that looks like. Okay, garlic. If you didn't already mince or buy minced garlic, like, <sighs> bless you, RIP. Love the pot. Where did you get that one? That's my father, and that's probably my mother talking on my father's account because I probably stole it from her. But it's not hers. It was my great grandmother's. <laughs> sorry, mom. Anyways, I if you don't have minced garlic, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to chop your own garlic. R.I.P. to you. Um, but I like buying pre-minced garlic. I'm lazy. Basically, I'm gonna use a lot. Um, I like garlic. If you don't like garlic and onions. Sorry, just add a little less. Just probably like three or four tablespoons. Okay, here comes the fun part. So hopefully, if you don't have fresh, fresh parsley, fresh thyme, that's okay. You can use dry. No one's talking. Okay, let's go. You can use dry if you want. But basically, here's time. If you've never seen time. <laughs> but you basically run your nail across it. And you have little leaflets. So I'm probably going to do like four or five little stalks. And sprinkle that in there. So again, run your nail across it. I really love thyme. Another one of my favorites is rosemary. I probably should have gotten rosemary, but I didn't. Um, okay, last one. If you're using dry, I would say like half a teaspoon, like a hefty half teaspoon. Okay, we're gonna come back to this. Parsley, we're actually gonna have to mince with our knife. Go this way. I'm probably just gonna use one little nice bushel. Again, if you're using dry, 
I would again say a hefty half teaspoon. I'm not against dry. I just the recipe, like if you if you want your recipe to like be extra banging, extra fresh, extra flavorful. I like to use fresh. I didn't grow an herb garden this year though, so sorry about that to myself. Okay. That's what that, just, you know, minced it up, whatever. If you're using dry, again, half a teaspoon. Sprinkling that all over. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we are going to make the part that's going to make our chicken and all this loveliness taste so good. Paula Deen's favorite, butter. So you're gonna take a whole stick of salted butter. I may have lied earlier when I said you would need a hand mixer because I was like, we're just gonna microwave it. Never mind, we don't need to beat this butter. We're gonna microwave it to make it so soft because we are going to be mixing onions, the onions we held back, more of the herbs, us, salt, pepper, garlic, all that. Cause again, we're gonna like make love to our chicken with this. So I'm gonna nuke this for like, I don't know, 10, 10, 12 seconds. You don't wanna completely melt it. You still want it to have some butter, butterness to it, some solidity. getting a good old-fashioned spoon to mix it with. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, no, you're gonna need more than 10 seconds. I don't know about your microwave. My microwave, you need longer, apparently. How y'all doing today? Please chat me up. If you're not cooking, I get it. Okay, that, yep. Okay, so probably like 20 seconds. So see there's still some butterness to it. So we're gonna add the onions we held back. Uh, where'd it go? So this is where I also fudged up. Um, if you don't have a zester of some sort for the lemon you purchased that I told you you needed to purchase, um, this is fine, just skip this part because we're gonna put lemon in this again anyways, so sorry. But I, if you don't have a zester, pretend that I'm not doing this, but I'm gonna zest this whole lemon into here. tablespoon of more minced garlic oh yeah I love garlic so if you don't love garlic I feel like you still won't even really be pounded with it so it's it's, it's fine <laughs> it's fine um, I'm gonna add a dash of olive oil because I want it to be a little bit more liquidy Probably like a teaspoon if you're a measuring person. Just trust yourself. Just put a little drizzle in there. Um, and now I'm going back to the herbs. I'm going to do three little thyme sticks. If you're measuring, probably like a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. Cause we're gonna shove this in the chicken too later. Flavor town, Guy Fieri, okay. More parsley. Um, these little guys should do it. 
Because again, we're gonna stuff the chicken with more parsley flavor. Because I mean, today's chickens are a little sad on flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna like a trick too. You can do this with cilantro too. Is like a trick to cutting it because it's like you know weird and leafy, and if you have a dull knife like me, it's kind of hard. But you just like wad it up. Boom, it's chopped. Okay, add that into my mixture. Okay, here's the part where we get our high tech spoon. And we mix, just mash it in there. So this is gonna be like our chicken glaze gonna make our chicken moist and flavorful. That's what it looks like. Kind of looks like mayonnaise with stuff in it. Yum. Love mayonnaise and love stuff in my, in my mayonnaise. Okay. Basically, we're on the home stretch, people. And I didn't lie. It's almost like a half hour, so that's good. Um, we're gonna go back to your lemon that you may or may not have zested. We're gonna cut the uh, ends off. We don't need those. Um, cut it however you feel comfortable. I'm, if you cut them in big chunks, that's fine. I'm going to try to cut them thin. Thin is the preference, but again, do whatever. Okay, now I'm going to bring our homeboy chicken over here. No one's named him yet either. I'm a little disappointed. May not do this again, you guys. Just kidding. Okay, bring it homeboy over. Maybe that's his name now, it's homeboy. Okay. Here he is. Okay, so this butter mixture that you just made. You can try to use your spoon, again, if you, like, don't like touching meat or this completely, like, weirds you out. But there is a layer of skin on top of your chicken. Like, try to be so gentle with it. But you're going to shove some of this butter mixture under this chicken. And then we're going to lather the top of it. And shove some inside. <laughs> Getting real personal with the chicken. So here we go. I'm just gonna take like a little tablespoon. Wow, I don't know where the camera is. A little tablespoon. Go shove it in there. Nice and deep black. Like, see, I mean, my hand does fit all up in there, but you're gonna get all up in there as best you can. I probably should have minced, I mean, like, I love onions, so I'm fine with this, but if you didn't mince your onions very small, and you don't like onions, RIP to you, but if you don't like onions, then there's probably something wrong with you, I'm sorry. It's just a thing. Okay, we're gonna get in the crevices, make sure you're getting it all. This is what's gonna add moisture flavor to your chicken. I keep just taking handfuls. Probably do like two big handfuls in here. Again, trying to get in there through the skin fold. You're basically making love to this chicken. Yeah. I'm gonna do one more slap in here. Yes. Mm. Okay. So, with your dirty hand, this is, I'm going to try to move this. No. <laughs> I need a camera crew, guys. Okay. So, I'm going to kind of like concave this a little because we want our chicken to sit at the bottom, towards the bottom of it a little. It's fine if there's some, you know, things, you know, things just sitting at the bottom of your pan. I am going to flip them over. 
and we're gonna rub some butter on top of him. We're gonna put it everywhere in his armpits, his back, his neck. Oh god, okay. I should probably not be allowed to narrate these things, but here I am again. Okay. So he's gonna sit <sighs> backside up, his booty up for now. We're gonna plop him into this pan. Again, just try to press him kind of in the middle. Whatever butter we have left, rub over top of him. Clearly our hands were, are gonna get dirty. Like, and you could be using a spoon. I'm just like, a savage apparently okay rub this all over top of him make sure you get all of it off <laughs> and then I'm gonna go wash my hands if you used your hands now is the time to wash your hands maybe regroup because we just fondled a poultry item but I'll be right back It's gonna be so much fun too. Use hot water and lots of soap. <laughs> Comes off faster with hot water. Of course you need to wash your hands with hot water and soap anyways. salt and paper back. We're going to salt and paper the chicken. You're going to like make sure you get into his armpits and stuff too. And then my paper. Um, like one or two sweeps of pepper. This is what he looks like in his little home right now. Looking okay. So now, your little lemon slices. You can put them really anywhere, but you wanna put them on the chicken. And we're gonna save two to shove up his butt. Sorry, little guy. And then like I said last, earlier, we're gonna take Probably like four sprigs of thyme and put that into his butt. I'm gonna need to wash my hand again because I did not prepare my parsley or get my parsley out, so hold on. Parsley, I'm not gonna mince it because this is just for some interior flavor. You could probably use, again, like a half a teaspoon if it's dried. I'm just going in with this bushel. It's going inside of them. Okay. Here's that. Yet. Now comes time for the shallots. This is what he's looking like. He looks kind of cute. Let's see. Hi. Okay. Look at all this extra onion -y goodness, too, that I'm just missing out on. And clearly, I know that this is really messy, but, like, I'm at home. We're in quarantine. Like, you don't got to be perfect, okay? So, shallots. Love shallots. 
Oh, guys, if you don't like onions and garlic, I'm so sorry. It's not going to be that potent, really. I mean, it's going to give it a lot of good flavor. You're going to be like, wow, I actually like onions and stuff like that. You're not a vampire. But basically, oh, shoot, shallots are mini sort of onions. But we have two. I'm going to cut it like an onion again. So, like, as you can see, this one has, like, two in its pod. You see that a lot? Maybe three? It's kind of, like, almost like garlic, too. It's an onion brother from another mother or something. Okay, and you're, unfortunately, you're going to have to peel him, too. Maybe it's easier to get it if we get him in half. But we're not going to have to dice this or anything. We're just going to stick it up the chicken. Like many other things that we did already. I can't get this off. Yeah, the one thing, like shallots are like garlic. We're like, I hate flipping peeling them. Here I am, Clark Griswold, again. Stuck to my finger. If you don't get that reference, I'm sorry. But it's from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. He's looking through the magazine after he put up the Christmas tree. The very sap-filled Christmas tree. He's covered in sap. And, of course, his fingers stick to everything. Looking through a magazine in bed. It's a crucial point, okay? In the movie. This one was easier because it's kind of a sad sister. It's not as fresh, but whatever. It's just flavor. It'll be fine. Okay, I quartered them. Clearly, we have four quarters now or whatever. Four pieces. Just gonna shove them up its butt again. Sorry, little guy. Okay, and like we really have a chicken right now. Okay, we're gonna put more salt on it though. Um, and then, well, I need to wash my hands, but then we'll be right back. Honestly, like Food Network should probably not sign me up because my script is pretty bad. I mean, there is no script on free ball on it, but you know what I mean. Okay. Hmm. Well, I only have one water measuring cup because all the rest of mine are dirty, but if you have another liquid measuring cup that you did not melt your butter in, or if you feel like you can eyeball this, which I feel like you can, you're probably fine, that we're going to put a half a cup of water and drizzle it over the top just for like a little extra juicy steaminess for all of these veggies and whatnot. Um, preheat your oven at 375. Now would be a good time. I'm gonna let this sit basically for the time it will take to preheat your oven. Just like that 10-15 minutes like it does something like it the butter sitting on it flavors your i don't know the butter and herbs are flavoring your chicken more that's just my weird logic i don't know but yeah so now we're gonna set the oven 375 fahrenheit now i'm gonna get my half a cup of water gonna drizzle it Drizzle it over the top of all of it. And we gonna salt it again. Like two, three shakes. If you're using normal salt. Okay. And if you like more salt, that's fine. If you like less salt, that's fine. Like, it's really hard to judge salt because everyone's flavor palette is different. But guys, that is basically it. We have 
prepped and made this chicken. If anyone has a question, now is the time because we're obviously going to bake the chicken once our oven is preheated. So I also don't know if you guys, I'm like obviously not going to stand here this whole entire time while this chicken is cooking because it's going to take an hour at 375. Maybe more because your oven's different than mine. I'm going to put it on like the middle rack but it's more positioned to the lower point of my oven because that's just my oven. But if you feel like when you use your oven the middle rack works for you just we're gonna put it on the middle rack do not put it on the top rack it's gonna be on the middle rack don't put it on the lower rack middle rack but again cook this for an hour and i think i'm going to come back again live because once we cook it for an hour we're gonna take it out we're gonna have to flip him over we're gonna salt him on his underside. Throw him back in the oven. I'm gonna write this down right now. Okay, we're cooking him for an hour. 375. Once that hour is over with, taking him out, flipping him over. I'm gonna come back and do it live. Just so I'm here if you have any questions in an hour. Um, cook him for another 15 minutes. Flip him back over to like how he's sitting now. And we're going to broil him to get the nice, crispy, golden skin. But yeah, that is it for now. So I'm going to let him sit here. Just all perfect looking as he is. Look at that chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let him sit while my oven's preheating. And I will be back in an hour to see what he looks like. Um, see how you guys are doing. Do we cover the pot when it's in? No, we don't have to. No. Um, we want him nice and crispy. So no, we're not going to cover the pot. I just suggested a potted pan because usually they're like larger in size. And I probably shouldn't have said with lid. So I apologize. No. We do not need to use the lid. Any other questions from anyone? Before I go and shove him in my oven. Feel free to DM me too as well if you have any questions. If you made this marvelous chicken. But I'm going to sign off now. For a while, but I will be back when all of our timers are going off in an hour and we'll see how things are. Okay, 375, an hour, I will be back. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> okay, well I just wanted to get back on here because I know I said that in an hour I would come back. It's There's 10 minutes left on my timer and I tempt the chicken I'm probably going to have to add like another 15 or 20 minutes and that's totally fine. My chicken was four pounds, you know, and I was planning on a three pound chicken. Your chicken weighs different than mine. Your oven's different than mine. Just keep temping it. Temp it in different uh, places. 165. Mine wasn't really close to that. So like I said, there's 10 minutes left. I'm probably going to give it another... 20 minutes or so but I just wanted to update you on that let me know how it's going too if you have any questions send me pictures too so we're gonna flip the chicken Ted's the cameraman because we have to flip him for 15 minutes it might be longer again my chicken's a little bit fatter so he's been taking a while which is okay but before we put him away we have to salt and pepper his underside
do a couple shakes. You want them to look nicely dressed. So we're gonna throw them back in there, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And that's done. You can end the video now, cameraman. <laughs> so it shuts. All right, so I flipped my chicken back over. We are gonna broil him at 500. That's, that's the main broiling temperature. He does look a little, a little crispy, but I want him a little crispier. We're gonna broil him for like three minutes. Three to four minutes. We'll be back. We're done. Okay, so I broiled it for like 10 minutes because mine needed to get to temp. I like it extra crispy. This is what it looks like. I will cut it up, plate it, show a picture, done. It's done.